Okay, I like to fine tune my arrows, my bows, so everything's performing, you know, to the best of my ability to make it uh, where it does perform well. Um, I know from all the historic journals that the native people of the Southeast here put their heart and soul into making the best bows and arrows they could make. And the Europeans were, the first Europeans here were really impressed with their craftsmanship. So I like trying to do the same thing. Uh, you know, I've never thought that primitive bow and arrow was caveman, and it's not. It's completely not. I mean, these people were intelligent homo sapien people. They were not, you know, people chewing on a bone in a cave. So, you know, I say the more attention you put, the more finesse you put into your archery gear, you know, the better it's gonna work for you. Okay, the main point I'm trying to make here is transition, smooth transition. Now you can make things too weak. You know, you can taper a four shaft too much. You can cut a notch where you've removed a lot of wood to where it got weak. So there's where the craftsmanship comes in to make things as streamlined as possible, but still strong. People over the years that know me have said, that hunts with a rock tied on a stick. And it's true, but this is what they imagine. Something this crude, this dull, and no penetrating qualities. This is pretty much a rock tied on a stick. Blunt, blunt edges, believe it or not, I've seen some so-called primitive archers make this junk and call it an arrow. It's not. Far cry from this. Tons of detailed work, finesse, and thought behind making these arrows here smooth and making them penetrate at their highest level. Uh, you would not want to be shot with this. I can guarantee you it would go through and through. Let me show you how I achieved this. Okay, this is one of my split hickory four shafts. This one's been file hardened, which I would not leave it on the fire long it's not that thick you know so this was on the fire and it depends on how high it is over the coals uh, maybe an hour something like that you can see a little bit of tan to it a lot of people don't like these because they think they'll snap here where they go down in the cane but the secret is don't make a score line if you make a score line sure it can break I could score this thing right here and snap it but right now I mean, it is extremely strong. If you overcook it, it'll break. But the reason I do this is not so it's really harder. The reason I'm doing this is so it doesn't expand and contract with weather changes. You know how even the doors and windows on your house, I mean, they'll get really stiff during the summer and in the winter they get loose and that's the wood expanding and contracting and the same thing can happen to your four shafts so if you file harden them that kind of stabilizes the wood where you don't have that issue as much and i do not cut crease lines here okay to get your four shaft material because i'm a four shaft guy i love four shafts uh you can split them out of straight grain hardwood i like hickory uh, you can cut your little four shaft saplings out of sparkleberry. Uh, Yopon is really one of my favorites. I actually used the side right there for kind of a guide. It's a double edge, how about that?
I once had a guy that uh, told me he never, he didn't like four shafts because it took too long to make. And I took a pocket knife and made one in about, might have been 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And I don't know if he's making four shafts or not, but they really aren't that difficult even with stone tools. It's getting a little taper to it, it's getting straight. That wasn't too difficult. I can fine tune these a little bit later, but there's a Yopon and a Hickory 4 shaft, and they're both tough, strong materials and they're long so I can cut in my tab and then reduce this to match the diameter of the arrow. Same here, tapered. But the deal is to, to cut this thing, the notch, so the point is really tight. I mean, you could actually just set it in there with some pitch and probably shoot it. Uh, I know you could. I took a short tooth and embedded it into a four shaft like this, no wrappings, and shot it through a dead deer. And these are file hardened hickory four shafts, and they are finessed. They are fine tuned. The points were fit down in the notch so tight, so exact, that you probably could shoot this through a deer without any glue or wraps. Four shaft was fire hardened and tapered. And when it comes to the cane, the transition is absolutely perfect. It's just a matter of making this wide and setting it inside the cane and then trimming it back toward the point until you get everything perfect. I set the point with uh, high glue and my pine pitch and it is super strong. The sinew wrappings were super fine. When I wrap them, I've learned to pull the sinew and hold it just a second, then make a turn. Get another little grip and pull and make a turn. And I'm stretching that sinew to its, until it's breaking point almost and wrapping it. I've seen an Inuit on uh, YouTube. I think it's called the Magic Bow. And I like watching those old videos. I think it was from the 1940s or something. And he was stretching his sinew like that. And I caught that little technique and I've been doing it. And I tell you, man, it makes the sinew almost disappear. You can't hardly feel it. It's just so smooth. But then the other key thing I'm doing is after I get everything just right, I take an antler or a bone and I've been burnishing. I think I burnished this one three different times, all my arrows, and it compresses to fibers. And many, many years ago, I used to burnish the whole cane arrow, and so I started burnishing again. But man, it makes them slick. I mean, super slick. This point is a little bigger than what I've been using. Like I say, I took two deer and a pig with smaller points than this, but this one would work. I mean, it's completely usable. Here's another one, the same technique, super smooth transition. Wow, look at that. Just burnished, fire hardened, all the attention to detail. No diameter change on anything. I do all my arrows this way. Look at these little beauties. Slick, hard, penetrating. You know, you could probably go as far as lubricating your arrow a little bit with some rendered fat. If you're going on a hunt, you know you're gonna shoot this particular arrow. You could probably wipe a little bit of rendered fat or, or wax or something on your arrow and make it even slicker. Um, there's been some tests on YouTube I've seen where guys got better penetration doing that and you know 
do everything you can do to make your arrows um, penetrate better. Another little tip I'll give you is, uh, besides burnishing, I actually sand my sinew just slightly, um, just to make that, and then I put more animal glue over the sinew after I sand it lightly to just make it smoother. You know, that's the whole thing here is to make these transitions and this arrow super smooth so nothing slows, nothing slows the momentum of this arrow. I knew she was in trouble. So, uh, yeah, it was quick. But the old bow is uh, super, super nice. My arrow's been working good too. I mean, I put a lot of work into these babies this year, but it did the job. Uh, got some more videos coming very soon. I'm gonna be doing a video on the Bayou Gula Bird Point. So that'll probably be my next, next project. So anyway, you know what to do. Um, just like and, you know, subscribe to my channel and we'll keep doing this. Always go to a, one of the better hunters I know to get advice on the weather and conditions and what does he think about the deer moving and we'll talk to him now. What do you think, man? You think it's gonna be a good morning? You got a headache? Yeah, you got a piece of flint stuck in your head. You would go this morning? Okay. If you didn't have a headache, okay. That's fine. Sometimes I wonder about that guy.